Welcome back to this latest episode, Japan's top business interviews. I'm your host, Dr. Greg Story, President, Dale Carnegie Tokyo Training, and my special guest today is an old friend of mine. He is Scott Sato, the president of Circle Lace. Am I, how am I saying that correctly? Circle, Circle Lace. Lace. Correct. Yes. It's a bit of a tricky one. What does Circle <laughs> Lace do? What does this company do, Scott? So um, it's a Salesforce consulting business. Right. Um, wow, well, what a gold mine that is. <laughs> Help, what helping a digital gold transformation. mine right there. Like we use Salesforce. You do? Okay. And you're just constantly having to customize stuff and yes. hire people. Yes, exactly. Now, I wonder if right. Salesforce is so profitable. So you're, <laughs> I think you're in the right business, Scott. You're in the right business. So. Fantastic. How did, let's go back a little bit. You sure. know, you've had a number mm -hmm. of really important jobs in this town and in Japan over a long period of time. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to the roots of it all. You know, how did this all begin? How did you wind up here? Why do you keep running all these amazing companies here? <laughs> sure. So, uh, so going back to where I was born, I was born and raised in New York City. I uh, worked in uh, New York for uh, about 10 years and then worked here for the for the. What did you do for the 10 years in New York? Yeah, so I, I, I was an accounting major, so I, I studied accounting and... Um, you look way too exciting for an accountant. <laughs> I, I wonder if there's, a, you know, you're doing other things now. <laughs> so I worked in the accounting field until I was a, age 30. Oh. And, um, you know, like, like you said, you know, accounting, accounting firm wasn't, wasn't what, what, what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. So I was looking around and I, I was, a, one of my mentors was an attorney for Pasona, which is an HR company yeah. uh, here in Japan. Mr. Nambu. Yes, 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 yes. And um, they were just going public uh, in, in Japan. And so they needed a CFO to come in and, and help with their numbers on the U.S. side. Ah. And so I originally started with uh, Pasona in 2000. This um, is here or there? No, in the U.S. In the U.S., okay. In the U.S., right. So I, I joined Pasona in 2000 as a CFO of the U.S. business, which is much smaller than the, than the business here. And um, after a couple of years, um, Nambu came over and said, hey, why don't you run the business? <laughs> And so I ran the U.S. business from 2003 to 2000, uh, 2000, sorry, sorry. I have to go back a little bit. Let me cut that back. Just um, run, that, run that part again. <laughs> okay. Pick that up where you want to pick it up. So I worked in, account, in accounting from 1993 to 2000. And then from 2000 to 2008, I, I, wor I worked at Pasona in the U.S., and um, after a couple of years, uh, Nambu came over. And so what was your job in Pasona in the U.S.? Oh, so I was a CFO originally. CFO for right, Pasona. Okay, right. So US. after studying accounting, I what went into... What sort of business did Pasona have in the U.S.? So it helps um, Japanese companies with their hiring needs. Ah, so it's a recruiting business okay. just focused on the Japanese okay. companies. Okay. And um, there's many that go over there. They have many HR issues, as, as you're familiar on the other yeah. side, yeah, yeah. Uh, working here for U.S. companies. Um, the other the counterpart, Japanese companies over there have the same types of issues. So we help them with those types of uh, HR related mm. issues. Mm. Um, after a couple of years from 2000 to 2003, I was a CFO and then um, Nambu came over, as you said, and said, hey, why don't you run the business? Uh, the, the, uh, the older guy was retiring. So I ran the, the U.S. business from 2003 to 2008. Oh, okay. And in 2008, you know, again, Nambu came over and said, hey, why don't you come to the Japan business? Um, the Japan side needs um, some some additional or you know, global support, and so. And have you grown up speaking Japanese at home? Have, did you know Japanese language by this time? Um, so my parents are both Japanese, mm -hmm. but um, they I was born in the U.S. Mm -hmm. and grew up in the U.S., so I can speak Japanese. But mm -hmm. um, working in a Japanese environment was uh, new to me, mm -hmm. and um, where the first couple of days, the first couple of years in Pasona was a struggle, <laughs> to say the least. I'll bet a very you know Japanese companies, big company like that, very hierarchical. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, difficult. Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. and, and, and even on the U.S. side, it was, it was a very complicated structure. But coming over here mm -hmm. in 2008 was a was a real eye opener, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. right? And um, you know, again, 2008, I, I got transferred over here, um, and I was supposed to run the overseas businesses. We had about 20 offices, uh, 25 offices around the world. So that's a big enough job. Yeah, sure. It was. It was. Um, and uh, in 2008, as you're good, well, Lehman Shocker, right? That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Shock. right. 2008, Lehman Shocker, <laughs> sort of always compressed into my mind. Yes, yes, yes. And I brought that over. <laughs> you brought that with you. Yeah. Here I am. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And so it was a struggle that, that first year. However, um, you know, like you said, the, the culture side was even more of a challenge. Mm. You know, even words like um, gambaro, you know. Is a uh, you know work harder in English and and so getting used to words like that, trying to understand how communication is done here was mm. was was a quite was quite a challenge in that first couple of years, mm. even you know going to izakayas and and having a drink, you, know, you can't understand what anybody's saying because as, as uh, mm -hmm. you know words get slurred and it's very hard to understand, mm. 
you know, wh whatever he's talking about. So mm. those couple of years were, were a challenge. Mm. Um, however, you know, because um, you know, Pasolino is a, a very friendly company. Mm. Um, you know, we, we worked on that quite uh, significantly over the first couple of years. And um, in 2009, uh, I got promoted to, uh, to vice president of the business, um, mainly because the, the and this is a big business, right? Yes. Yeah, so we're talking. Time, how many people working in Persona by this time? So at that time, it was about two billion dollars U.S. Two billion U.S. Um, revenues, yeah. About um, five thousand employees. Five thousand employees. And you're right. the vice president. That's a yeah. That's this correct. is a That's high right. ranking position. Yes. In a yes. big company. Yes. Yes. And um, at that time, you know, um, there's a, a trend, and, and as you know, the trend usually comes from the U.S. and um, and the and Japanese companies kind of adapt those trends. And at that time it was outsourcing or BPO business. And because um, I, in, my in my past experience with Ernst & Young, um, BPO outsourcing was very common in the US, but in Japan it was still mm. very new. And so that was what and we tried to- there were also some laws about that too. The laws actually had to change to allow that to happen as I recall, is that That's correct? correct, that's yeah. correct. So so if you come from the US or even Australia, outsourcing is very, is very it, it works the same as contract workers. Hmm. In in Japan, Haken staff versus outsourcing is, is very different laws, and, and you have to kind of separate it the two. It seemed to me, my memory, you check, check me on this whether I'm correct or not, but my memory was that the, the thrust of the government policy up to that point was to keep people in full-time employment as seishai in, full-time workers, Yes. and then have some Haken, some part-timers, but not to really rock the boat and have anything else. So that was sort of protecting the idea that everyone, you know, you join after university or high school and you stay there forever, that type of really strong work culture they had here. And then this is a big change, yes. this BPO, right? Yes, well, even for Haken, the, originally Pasona started it, was the, the reason why Pasona started Haken originally was because women, you know, um, they would go into full-time jobs at, at 22, and then when they, when they were 30, when they would have, ki have kids, they would come out of the workforce. Mm -hmm. And then when, when they wanted to come back in, all they could find was part-time jobs at, mm -hmm. at small and mid-sized businesses. Mm -hmm. That's why Pasona started the Haken mm -hmm. business, where He discovered Pasona that when he was at university, didn't he? That's Pasona. right. I forget exactly how that right. came about. I remember reading that. He was at university and he discovered there were all these capable, talented women wanted to do something but had no options so exactly started right. creating options for them that's right that's exactly yeah. right that's the way persona was rooted and how long were you <clears throat> vice president of persona how long you, did you well, say i was i was only vice president for two years and okay. then i was i became the president in 2011. the president of persona that's correct global right. that's correct yeah right. well that's a, right. again massive big job <laughs> right. that's a very i mean from vice president to president in two years of a guy coming out of the states when he's got you know 4,999 Japanese probably to choose from, right. to choose you, that's really something. Yeah, I mean, it, it was, again, it was right after Lehman, and um, you know, Japan was going through changes at that time. There was a few Japanese Americans or um, US uh, educated um, people that were heading up some, some business at that time. You know, Paul Yunemine, mm -hmm. um, Nakanishi-san from Hitachi, mm -hmm. uh, Santori's, uh, mm -hmm. Ninami-san. These guys mm -hmm. were just coming out of the the, the Japanese companies and heading up larger businesses. So it was a good time for um, Japanese Americans like myself or you know, American educated or US educated people to take, take these type, types of roles. So I was part of that initial trend. So I was kind of lucky at, from that perspective. Mm. And how long did you stay at prison? So I became president in 2011 and, and I re re Just in resigned time for in 2018. The tsunami and triple That's nuclear right. meltdown. I mean, I experienced time it all. everything. <laughs> I experienced it all. So, you know, for, for me, you know, it was a great experience from a business perspective. Also from uh, all those uh, tra tragedies, it was, mm. it was, it was a Tough. challenge to manage Tough. those. Yes, Tough. yes, 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 yeah. yes. And so how long did you, you remain the post? So for seven, eight, or seven and a half years, I resigned in 2018. Right, right, right. So talk a little bit about what happened after that in a moment. But mm -hmm. uh, number son, I think, from my memory, is the first billionaire <laughs> I ever met. <laughs> was that right? <laughs> yeah, I was in Osaka. There was an American Chamber event. He was a speaker. Mm -hmm. He spoke in Japanese. Mm -hmm. And uh, I asked him a question in Japanese. Right. Right. And then I sort of followed up. And then I was moving to Tokyo not long after that. And he said, well, come and see me when you're in Tokyo. And I did. I visited him oh, nice. in his headquarters. And I remember he had... Uh, you had to sort of go through this big room 
where all the executives, probably you were sitting there too, on this raised dais, mm -hmm. so they were higher than everybody else invisible, and you walked through the canteen or the cafeteria, I think from Mary's cafeteria, these guys to his office, I think, or maybe these guys in the cafeteria's office, and had like these, uh, I remember like five or six gorgeous <laughs> secretaries, all absolutely, could be Miss Japan's no problem. Mm -hmm. And he had, all along the window shelf, he had all these books there for him to sign. He had big piles of books that he was signing and a very charismatic guy. Mm -hmm. And he had, I don't know if he still got it, he had this place in Juban, which is like a type of uh, entertainment area with a, a restaurant and, and sort of bars mm -hmm. and sand baths mm -hmm. and all this sort of stuff. And he invited me to a few events there. And it was full of politicians. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It was full of other business people. Right. It was full of foreigners like me. It was, a, it was like a, sort of a, I guess like a Medici type of personality who was a patron of the arts mm -hmm. and wanted to sort of, you know, glue different people together and be a connector. And he, he sort of, it was just a remarkable guy. And I remember his daughter actually is a great, very talented what she's doing now. She's a very talented uh, violinist. Oh, okay, yes, yes. And she came and she played. And at other times, there were other, you know, young people. He was mm -hmm. being a patron. Very charismatic guy, I have to say. Mm -hmm. You know, like he wasn't snobby or, hey, look at me, I'm a billionaire, I'm unbelievable. It wasn't like that at all. Very yes. down to earth. Uh, yes. I found him a very, very charming and charismatic guy. But how was yes. it working for him? No, no, that's exactly right. I think, um, you know, I learned a lot from him because he's very good at marketing himself, um, making those connections. I, I think, you know, in, in, the te in the almost 20 years that I worked with Pasana, um there was not a person that I couldn't meet, you know, just without you know, with just one one call to him and, and he, would be, he would connect me to almost anybody. So that was uh, quite uh, interesting. Yeah. You know, politicians, you know, all those types of uh, people he's, he's very connected to. So mm. um, it's quite interesting to, to experience that. Mm. Um, and, um, you know, on the other side, I had to run the business. So you know, I had to earn the money to, to have those parties. <laughs> so that's Thank how you. we separated the business. It was always fantastic. <laughs> it was always fantastic event. <laughs> right, so that, that hasn't changed. He's still very um, involved with the community. He's um, moved now his headquarters to Awaji. Awaji, that's correct, right. That's Which Awaji, for people who may not know it, is a reasonably small island yes. off Kobe and yes. Osaka. Yes. Uh, and uh, you have to take the boat or there's a bridge now. I think yes. you can get across right that's to correct. Awaji. So mainly for, is it now, is it onions? Awaji is very famous for that's that. That's correct. Onions are very yes. good in Fish. Awaji. <laughs> Fish, yeah, yeah, right. And it's got a major whirlpool as a tourist attraction. <laughs> But That's apart right. from that, there's not much there. Yes. So it's interesting that he made his headquarters in Awaji because, yes. you know, we had the, in, what is it, 95, we had the earthquake yes. in uh, in Awaji, was centered on Awaji, which correct. really wiped out Kobe. That's correct. Really wiped out Kobe. So, you know, a type of, again, uh, Phoenix rising from the ashes mm -hmm. to help rebuild that area, I guess. So. Yes. Interesting that he moved the whole thing there. Well, he's from, he's really from the Kansai. Himself, That's correct. He? He's, he's from Kobe. He's gone home, right, basically. Yeah. Right. So I think one of the things that he, he thought was something that we could t do as a, as a company was really give back to the regional revitalization. Hmm. Um, I think that's one of the key, key words that have come up in the Japanese. Well, the government talks about it. That's right. That's but right. they don't do anything about it. That's right. And that's why he wanted to do it. I think they <laughs> moved five bureaucrats to Tokyo in the cultural ministry. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Everyone yes. else was still here. It's like, yes, yes, yes. we need to revitalize the regions. We've got too yes. much concentration risk in Tokyo. Yes. I know, I know, we won't do anything. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> but he's doing it. Yeah. So if, if you have a chance, please go over there. You know, it can set you up. Um, we, you know, they have over 50 businesses there now. Yeah. Um, restaurants, entertainment facilities, all sorts of manga related um, uh, entertainment areas. It's, it's quite, it's quite fun. If you spend a couple of days, it's, it's a good time. Um, yeah. So it is. I think at different stages, he he had you know I can imagine you know him better than I do, but I can see the wheels ticking. He's thinking, where can I where can I put this guy <laughs> into one of my businesses? You know, at different times I've had that. I didn't want to go that route, but mm -hmm. I could just see the brain was thinking, hmm, could I put him here? Could I put him there? <laughs> right. What could he do for me over here? I, I didn't yes. join, but I could yes. see the I could see the wheels moving. Yes, 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 yes. So yes, I guess yes, he's probably yes, doing yes. that constantly. So yes, that's scanning correct. for talent. That's correct. Not that that's I'm correct. saying I'm talent, but no, 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 he's no. scanning. He's scanning for people he can he can employ. Maybe yeah. that's right. Yeah, that's right. Mm. So he's always that's always been a, a talent of his, and he loves doing it. So mm. you know, it's funny because even the office buildings, our offices, he used to design by hand. 
by himself. Really? We didn't use designers. He drew it out by hand. And that one you had in uh, in town with the rice in the in That's the basement correct. that was amazing. Yes, I remember going yes, there yes. and seeing building. all this rice being grown in the basement yes. under lights. That was incredible. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah hydroponics or whatever. Yes, amazing. that's correct. Amazing. That's correct. <laughs> like, what am I doing with a rice field in the middle of, I don't know, is it Chua or something? Yes, so we called it the most ex world's most expensive rice. <laughs> yes, that's right, that's right, that's right. The rent per square f uh, meter on something like that would be extraordinary. Yes, yes. So uh, post, uh, well, post persona, what, mm -hmm. what do you do then? Well, I mean, just to get back to Circulace and Aura. So Circulace is a company that I started when I was at Persona. Oh. Okay. Right. And okay. the reason why we started was because we wanted to put Salesforce in, but we couldn't find engineers to do it. And the, you know, as you as you know, the IT talent in Japan is, is very low. Yeah. Skill talent, skill levels very low. So we want to try to uh, build a business out where we can help people get trained into Salesforce as well as use it for ourselves. Right. That's why we started Circulace about 12 years ago. Ah, so it's been running independent of you for all that period of time. Man. That's correct, yeah, right. Yeah. That's right. I was just the chairman for the last 12 years. Right, right. And, right. Um, and so, so that business was uh, up and running. And then mm. the CEO just decided to leave this January. Oh, okay. So that's why I came back. And came back into it. Took over so what, from was your, what was your main role <laughs> after Persona? What were yeah. you doing? So, um, yeah, I think um, I, I made a real career change after 2018. And the main reason for that was because um, I wanted to understand how private equity and venture capital was, was working. Mm -hmm. they, they've, they've, they've become much more ingrained in, in the Japanese market as it is worldwide. So and let me guess, you made so much money at Persona. You got, you know, like Scrooge McDuck, you got money everywhere. <laughs> where, where, where do I invest it? I better learn about V and VC. Is this how it went? No, 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 no. I mean, from a business perspective, the company went from 1.8 billion when I took over, and then we ended up at 3.3. Gee. In 2018. Yeah, I'm just trying to think, who do I know who's been running a $3.3 billion business? There's a few of them, but <laughs> probably per that I know personally, you're probably the only one, so well done. Yeah. No, 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 thank you. And so, you know, I was, I was at 53 at the time, and I said, let me really try to figure out what I wanted to do one more time. Mm -hmm. and, and, and private equity was an area that I was really interested in. So I went to work for a por portfolio company ah, that, that PE okay. owned. Right. And it just happened to be that Tricor was was a company that right. yeah. that was owned by, um, or it was owned by Premira, yeah. but uh, the 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 guy there named Alex Emery, he's a um, co uh, Saint Mary's guy like uh, Hiroshi Ali, you know, that, well, that uh, Saint Saint yeah. Mary's gang, yeah. and he happened to be the the head of this uh, uh, this Tricor business yeah. that that they, they, they had purchased. Okay. And they just ha didn't have a Japanese CEO at the time, uh -huh. so um, I, I decided to take that. It was the first time in you know ten years that that I was, as the I was working in the subsidiary, right? Because I was working at the parent company for so long. But I wanted to see um, how private equity worked, how they how they incentivized employees, how they you know really ran the business, and um, that business again you know went from well that, well they bought it for eight hundred million and they sold it for two point five billion. Ooh, in five years. Earner. In five years, that's an earner that's right there. Right. Wow. Right. So something like that you never see in the Japanese market. No. Um, and no. something that's that's a you know it's a leverage buyout that that's mm. very unique to the industry, and and that's what I really wanted to learn how that how that all you know, came mm. together and worked, and so that's what I did for the last uh, five years. Mm. Right. Well, it's been you've had an extraordinary career, you know, Scott. I mean, amazing from. Uh, a, a very demure, grey cardigan, slipper-wearing accountant in New York <laughs> to running a $3.2 billion company in Japan. You've done it all. Yeah. Just thinking about uh, leadership, if you look back in your career, you've had different phases and different roles, mm -hmm. but what are some things you've found that worked well to get people engaged to follow you mm -hmm. as the leader? Mm. I think for, for me, um, one of the key things that I always worked on was um, building trust amongst that key key, key team. Mm -hmm. um, I think that works around the world. Um, how? It works every single time. We, we say these words, mm -hmm. build trust, but actually, practically, how do yeah. we do that? I, mean, I think it's you know, spending time with them, understanding what, 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 what drives them, what, mm -hmm. they're, what they're strong at, what they're weak at, mm -hmm. making sure that, that you understand that and you're able to help them develop those skills that they want to develop. And then mm -hmm. they, they're able to cover for, for your weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And building that team out is, is, I think, critical to that first mm -hmm. stage. I think I've done that each time. Mm -hmm. um, of course, How about on the receiving end on the Japan side of mm -hmm. things? Because Japan, as we know, is very hierarchical. Senpai Kohai system, take orders, do stuff, you know. Uh, 
uh, don't take any accountability if possible. <laughs> and so when you apply that, that style mm-hmm. of building trust with a Japanese team, mm-hmm. was there any particular difference from when you're working in the States or no difference at all? Yeah, no, I think there's a very big difference. Mm-hmm. And, and this is what I saw with the US, Hong Kong, Singapore. I think those were very similar. Mm-hmm. And then Japan was very different in that in the US, Hong Kong, Singapore, these countries, you can find talented people and you're able to replace mm-hmm. um, what, what you need versus mm-hmm. what you have. Mm-hmm. Um, Japan is not so easy to do that, as no. we all know. And so, and even if you went out to the market, it's very hard to find the skill sets you need to, to really mm-hmm. backfill those positions. Mm-hmm. So what you have to do is you have to kind of build those skills with, with what you have. Um, you know, the good thing about Japan is that everybody's well educated from a um, average perspective. Mm-hmm. And so, so it's, it's much easier to train people into the skills that you need. And they're also, I think, very diligent. Yes. You know, the, the sort of basic fundamentals of Japanese culture is that people take work seriously. Yes. Um, you know, you have these artisans who are, you know, laying gold leaf on some damn thing and they've been doing it for like 50 years and yes. they're a master of it. And yes, yes. They're lauded for that and yes. appreciated for that. And, you know, when someone says they've been working for a company for 40 years, people go, oh, that's fantastic. Yes. You know, you're a senpai, you're, you're a legend. You yes, know? yes. In Australia, you know, shouldn't you be leaving by now? You aren't you out of date? <laughs> you, know? you get some young person in here who's going to be cheaper, better. Yes. Like the mentality is so different. Yes, and yes, age yes. and stage here. Yes. And so uh, in many ways, that seriousness with that education is an interesting combo. Yes, and I think where you, where you were educated or experienced is, is a big difference as well. It's a good, a good uh, story that I tell is when I, when I was leaving Pasana. Um, of course, they didn't want me to leave. But um, um, when you talk to somebody that was uh, experienced only in Japan, 100% of the time they would say, oh, motai nai. You, know? motai nai. you shouldn't have quit. Yeah. Right? You should stay there until you retire. <clears throat> right? yeah. if I, every single international person says, wow, good job. You know, th- taking the, the next step, taking a challenge on something different. And, and it was 100% of the time. Psychology, totally different. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Totally yeah. different, yeah, yeah. Yes. And um, yeah, I think that that, that, that difference is, is ingrained in the culture here. So mm-hmm. I think that's the way you have to manage um, your teams and um, how, you, mm-hmm. how you manage companies is, is, is quite mm-hmm. different in that perspective. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, so, you know, you, you talk about en- engagement and building the trust, et cetera. Mm-hmm. One of the things, you know, is with your... Uh, educational background, mm-hmm. with your work background, your experience background, you draw on a lot of stimuli about things, what's happening in the world, what's happening in business. Mm-hmm. And often uh, when we're the leader, we'll have you know, very strong views mm-hmm. on how things should be run. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll have very strong idea generation. I, maybe we could do it like this. Mm-hmm. I've seen it work mm-hmm. over here like that. Mm-hmm. How can we adjust it over here? What could we adapt? And I find this with myself and I have to sort of restrain myself that I am an ideas guy. Mm-hmm. Love it. Mm-hmm. You know, brainstorming. Where's my marker pen? Let mm-hmm. me at it. You know? <laughs> but the problem can be that you look around and you realize, wait a minute, I'm the chief idea officer in this company and I'm not getting any ideas out of anybody else because okay. I'm just completely slamming it all the time with new, new ideas. Let's try this. Let's do that. I have to realize it, Greg. Right. Okay. Maybe you should shut up and yeah, yeah, yeah. get other people to tell you what their ideas are and restrain yourself a bit. Yeah. I know that about myself. But what have you found works well to get ideas from the bottom up? Mm. I think that's, um, that's one of the biggest challenges I had with, with Pasana. Um, with the other companies, I think it was, it was a little easier because they were smaller and there was more of a, um, uh, people from different experiences. Mm. Pasana is a chinsotsu. You worked there for you know how many years? And Graduate from uni, joined the company at twenty-two, right. go right. out at that's sixty-five right. or something. That's right. And you know, senpai says it. You do it. Is is the is the structure that that yeah. was that, that company has developed, and that's why the culture is so so good and and um, and friendly. I think that's the good side. The teamwork is is outstanding. If if the if the boss of the top mm-hmm. sets that culture. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes it's not like that. It can right. be like sort of torture, some sort of hell on earth. <laughs> and you're, in the, you're a part of the machine. Right. It's like that if you ever saw that, uh, I can't remember the name of the, the, the movie, but there's a very famous scene in a Charlie Chaplin movie where he's cleaning a clock and he gets sucked into the wheels mm-hmm. of, the, of the clock and his body goes mm-hmm. up and down, mm-hmm. you know, being meshed by this major clock. 
sometimes in big organizations, you can feel like Charlie Chaplin being meshed yes. by the yes. wheels of the machine, you yes. know, because you're yes. in there, it's like yes. torture. So someone like Nambusan who's setting a type of culture yeah. that's not like that, mm -hmm. then that's very fabulous. But I'm yeah. sure there are plenty of hard, hard, hard uh, rose to hoe in companies where the culture is quite different. Yes, no, I mean, I mean, Pasan is a, a very Japanese company. It is a well-structured, um, top-down style company. It, it is, I mean, I mean you can't, there's no um, f um, refuting that. However, um, one of the good things about Nambu is that when, when he sees that the company is having issues, he kind of throws everything upside down. So that's why I became um, the, 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 I ran the business so at that he's time. Quite, he's, he's quite experimental and radical and, and he, he progressive is. in his way of thinking then. Um, especially when, when he knows that things are not going correct. Mm. So he, he, he's ready to turn things upside down. So I probably jumped over 200 people, you know, when I became CEO yeah. or so you know, president. So you turn up, who are you? <laughs> well, I was, the, I was the CEO of President of America. <laughs> huh. yeah, 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 yeah. So what? You yes, know? yes, yes, yeah, my yes. My division is bigger than all of America. What are you talking about? Yes. I should be the president. Yeah, yeah that's right. The vice president. Yeah. That's right. So that, that's the initial challenge. But I think one of the things that I used um, was... Since you know, when I sat on the board, I was the youngest one by maybe 15 years. Wow! And and so you know, it was for me the two things that I used a lot was hey, you know, I'm, I'm the youngest, you know, now Mike, you know, you know, young guy is is was one thing I, I used to my advantage. And then the, the second one was you know, in the U.S. you would do it this way, and and you know, maybe in Japan this is you know, the way you do it, but in the U.S. you would do it this way, and that worked quite well mm. for uh, Japanese Sorry. managers mm. uh, because. The, you know, Japanese generally look up to the U.S. Mm. and um, especially and is, from this business This is way models. before any concepts around diversity as well oh, that's right. a value, right? <laughs> yes, Uniformity right. Yes. would have been the key value play, yes. Yes. not diversity. But you're actually bringing a diverse viewpoint right. into a very uniform structure. Yes, mm. yes, yes. Yeah, way again, yes. another path-breaking addition here. No, from no, no, Scott, no, no. you know, yeah, well done. Yeah. But but I mean, again, you know, that was right when you know Nakanishi, um, Suntory was changing. Paul Yunamin was head of IBM. I think that that culture was starting mm. to change, and people wanted wanted that change. So mm. I think we were just part of that wave. Mm. Is is the way I, um, I the way I take it, mm. and um, that that's th those are two things that I, I constantly went back to when I couldn't get something across, and um, mm. they would you know they would go to the hey, you know we're going to do this seniority system, and like oh no no, no we, we can't do the seniority system, we have to do something new here, and mm. that's the kind of that's the that's the wording, so that's the concepts I tried to bring, mm. and um, and they would say okay we'll give this guy a try and see see what happens. And so, so what about getting ideas from people below you? Mm -hmm. How do we, how do you get them to come up with yes. ideas? Yes. And I think this is the, the biggest challenge for Japanese companies, Japanese culture in, in general is that um, you get the black mark when you make a mistake. And, and that's still today, mm -hmm. that's one of the key, key things that, that I have a challenge with. Even with this business, you know, it's, yeah. a, it's a venture company and still that's, a, that's the key thing that. And who's the, who's the uh, holder of the black mark record keeping system? And I think it's the culture. It's usually HR. HR, yeah. Well, I think that's one of them. Let's, 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 let's call them out. <laughs> HR, that's why in Japan, right. no one likes HR. <laughs> you know, HR comes and tells you, well, you're moving to Iwate Ken, you know? Yes. From April. Yes, right? yes, I don't want to yes, go to Iwate Ken. Yes. Yeah. You're moving to Iwate Ken. Or, oh, you made an error. Right, make a note of that. So this, uh, you know, this sort of rural police as well. Uh, when HR comes through the door, no one's happy. So yeah, that's that's one of the issues. Yeah. We yeah. think of HR as an enabler, yeah. but not necessarily in Japan. Not necessarily. In yeah. Some cases I know it's, yeah. it's changing, but yes. there's yes. still very much that control, police, record keeping, black mark record keeping yes. functionality, which is not very uh, conducive. I think. Yes, and I think that's people because people stepping out of line. That's for sure. And I think that's because HR was not a C level position. Mm. It's one level underneath, yeah. and so it was, it was there. You know, it was a control position yeah. in itself, not a strategic position. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the key things that we tried to work work on with with Pasona. Mm -hmm. I really try to have um, uh, the sales side, um, other people involved with that HR piece, so that mm -hmm. strategy, what we need in in the workplace, what we need in the environment going forward, was was mm -hmm. part of the strategy and not just. You know, people moving things around just to, just for the sake of moving things around. Yeah, when I was at Shinsei Bank, I uh, I had a role there and I took over mm -hmm. HR, the function. It was amazing. Under the long-term credit bank, mm -hmm. the hiring policy was, okay, we're looking for mathematically inclined right. so-called banker types, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And for the women, we're looking for good-looking women. Because <laughs> we're going to work these guys 23 hours a day. <laughs> They'll never find a wife because we won't give them any time to go out and find a wife. Mm. So we'll find wives for them inside the company. I see. And they are these good-looking women. They'll find them as wives. They marry them, have kids, and the whole population thing will work. That was the, Seriously, that was the methodology. And then I when I joined, it was still, we're looking, we're, actually at that time, we were selling uh, financial products to wealthy people. Mm-hmm. Not the super wealthy, but wealthy people. Mm-hmm. So it's all sales skills, it's all mm-hmm. communication. And they're hiring mathematicians. Mm-hmm. It's like, hello, what are we doing that for? <laughs> we need people who can talk to people, who right. can communicate, who can right. build trust, right. 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 who can right. listen well. Different set of skills to yes. be mathematically inclined. Yes. Right? Yes. But see, so you sort of get these things stuck in an old way of doing yeah. things. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. funny. That was funny. Yeah. That's right. I think, you know, like you said, diversity, you know, Pasona was 70% women. Really? Right. And so, so diversity in, in a female male perspective was not an issue. However... That's right, because now that I think back, a lot of his senior people in Pasona were that's women right. now that's that I right. think back. Right. He used that's to right. turn up at events and he'd have so and so and so. There were that's older right. ladies. Yes. You know, when I say older ladies, they're probably 50s, 60s, yes. I guess. And they were very senior positions. Now yes. you remind me of that. Yes, yeah. yes. I mean, that side, that, that was diverse. However, you know, when, when you went one level down, you know, the, the managers were all men. All men. <laughs> right. So, so, you know, that was another yeah. challenge. We had to try to yeah. make sure that women, you know, got to those positions. And, and so you know, there's, there's, there's uniquenesses. Like, in concept, it looks like it's diverse. But when you get into the weeds, it's like, well, you know, you say you're diverse. But when you look Actually, into it, it's not. Look at the numbers. There's a lot of things that you have to work on, right? And that's changed a lot today. Mm. But, but, but you know, when I first started, that those kind of issues did well, come up. Well, funnily on. enough, you know, mid-career hire has become a thing. Was it Yamaichi Securities when we went broke in the late 90s? Yes. Through a whole bunch of uh, very hardworking, you know, honest Japanese on the street. Yes. And they got picked up by other finance-related companies yes. as mid-career hires, which yes. had not been done. Yes. And then Lehman Shock, a lot of hardworking, you know, sincere people on the street as well right. because of Lehman Shock, who then got picked up as mid-career hire. So mm-hmm. the whole mid-career hire thing has become a thing, which once upon a time it was not. Yes. If you left a company, you're on a path to oblivion. Yes. You know, you're yes. going yes. nowhere fast. Yes. No, that's right. And so you had to stay with the one company. But now mid-career hire gives you more options. Right. And so I know when I was at Shinsei, we, uh, we were doing a lot of mid-career hire. Mm-hmm. And at one point, I just one day I realized that the population of the bank had actually gone to the majority population. This is a retail bank I'm talking mm-hmm. about now. Were people who were outside. Mm-hmm. They hadn't come up from inside. Mm-hmm. The complexion had changed. So what was the culture? Mm-hmm. What was the culture? Because they're all bringing their own cultures right. from everywhere else. Yes. Yes. What was the Shinsei Bank culture? And that's yeah. when I, I started a program on really creating a one Shinsei yeah. type of strong culture that united everyone under yes. the one banner, which again, if you're not checking your numbers, it's sort of happening, not surreptitiously, but subliminally, it's sort yes. of, you know, subterranean and it's going on. And then one day you wake up and you go, wait yes. a minute, we don't even have a common culture here anymore. Yes. yes. Yeah, what are the things that you find? Like, you know, you <coughs> came, okay, you, you had a couple of years as vice president and then you step up into president mm-hmm. and people are going, why him, not me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and the board is one level of complexity, but right. what about your colleagues? How mm-hmm. did you go about getting the trust or at least uh, not being assassinated by your colleagues mm-hmm. who thought that they should have the job? Mm. Uh, how did you work that? How did you manage to you know, be the president and mm. get everyone to come with you? Mm. Um, and I think that, w- that goes back to that first comment we were talking about, you know, just r- trying to build that trust in the long term. Mm-hmm. I think you know, I've, I've never looked at things at, at, at a short term. I'm, I'm friends with a number today. You know, I, I could call them today. I mean, asked them for m- money for the businesses as well. So um, I tried to make sure that I have long-term relationships and, and that's something I, I, I've worked hard on, um, on throughout my life. So I think that's that's the way I try to build that core team where um, I can get I could get the team to work in one mm-hmm. cohesive unit. And so just to build that team out little by little was, was what I think I spent the most time on. You know, mm. going to, going to vacation. You know, going to, going to Gashiku, things like that, and just trying to build that team out was uh, was a uh, a lot of time spent. If you want to be successful as a leader, do the leadership training for managers course. All companies need people who can both manage and lead. Leading people screams out for real skills in communication, dealing with all different types of people, being excellent at innovation, planning, delegation, handling mistakes doing performance reviews really well, 
and inspiring and motivating the team. Do the Leadership Training for Managers course now in either Japanese or English. Are you doing business with Japan? Do you really know how things work? Japan Business Mastery provides the answers. Do you have the right networks and know how to create them? Do you know how to get on the same wavelength with Japanese buyers? Do you know what being trustworthy looks like from the Japanese perspective? Japan Business Mastery is based on more than 30 years experience in Japan and will become your go-to guide. Want to succeed in Japan? Buy Japan Business Mastery now. Because in a lot of cases in the Japanese system, it's patronage, right? Mm -hmm. you, you move up and you bring your henchmen or henchmen, usually henchmen, <laughs> with you, you know? Mm -hmm. And then as you, they follow you and they support you to get you to the top because they know when you get to the top, they're going to get the mm -hmm. cream jobs. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you get your rival over there doing exactly the same thing. Right. And then at some point, one right. of you is going to get it. Right. And that team will win and the other team won't win. Right. You know? right. And all the positions will be populated by the right. people who supported the patron. Right. But what you're talking about is a bit of a different approach. Yes, de definitely different. And, and the other thing that really helped us was um, during those seven years that I was, um, or nine years I was CEO and uh, VP, we bought about 15 different businesses. And um, you know, one of the key things that we did was, so Pasona's the main business, but I took um, Yakuins from this business and sent them to these new subsidiaries that we ah, bought. So this is and this is you getting rid of the uh, rivals. Is that what you're no, 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 no. A very carefully, chess-like, strategically placed elimination of the no, competition. No, no, I actually said my key guys. Oh, your key guys. Right. Your most and loyal guys. That's right. And, and the reason why I did that was left two all reasons. guys who are not loyal with you. Close, right. That's right. <laughs> Keep your that's enemies right. close. That's right. I mean, I okay. think that's the con That's one of the concepts that I, 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 I tried to uh, put together uh, for two mm -hmm. reasons. Number one, like you said, um, in the Japanese culture is you have to be in that mothership mm. to go up. And, mm. and I want to get rid of that culture. Mm. I wanted people that were succeeding to be able to succeed in different businesses. Mm. And um, I saw that good, I saw that um, working for two reasons. Number one, you learn how to build a culture. Mm -hmm. and, and you have, you have number one, you have a strong personal culture. Mm -hmm. You go to these new, new companies and you have to help them to adapt mm -hmm. to that, that culture. And, mm -hmm. and the key guys are the ones that can actually do that. Mm -hmm. And then I wanted them to also experience running a business. Well, talk about that building a culture because mm -hmm. you know, as you say, you have you have Japan culture mm -hmm. as an overlay. You have Nambu culture that mm -hmm. he created the company, mm -hmm. uh, the persona culture. Then you have you know uh, Scott mm -hmm. culture, mm -hmm. and all of that has to somehow align. What did you find worked well in terms of building a distinct culture? Mm -hmm. um, so I, you know, I, I never. I, I, I like Numbers um, f uh, a mission about overall culture. Mm -hmm. So so we never f frayed from that. Mm. However, running a business is very different than you know building a wise shima out mm. <laughs> and and trying to make make money well, to let's go to, and harvest the rice uh, in the basement. <laughs> right, 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 right. So that's you know, so we kind kind of separated overarching cultures versus how do we run the business to make it profitable. And so that's how we kind of separated the roles. And he allowed me to do that. That's mm -hmm. I think that's one of the key things that worked well. Mm -hmm. um, I was able to build the, the business culture from a uh, you know more of a westernized or, or a pseudo westernized uh, kind of a management style, and, and mm -hmm. that's why we really got to get get to a point where we got new ideas coming up. We, we were pe developing people, mm -hmm. and, um, and 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 we were able to build the culture not just from a personal culture, but from outside as well, so that we can kind of do a a kakezan, you know, a multiplication versus an addition type of a mm. um, and when you're putting uh, people in leadership positions who are mm -hmm. relatively younger, mm -hmm. younger than maybe what you'd normally expect. Like, you know, when I was at Shinsei, uh, the bank branch managers, uh, we nearly had 50 branches. They'd be average age be about 55. Right. All gray hair, all guys, one right. woman, all right. guys. Yes. And uh, I revolutionized that. I, I flipped it and I took the new, not branch manager position, but the revenue mm -hmm. driver mm -hmm. responsibility, yep. sales leaders, mm -hmm. average age went down to 35, 60% mm -hmm. men, 40% women, mm -hmm. which you think about that in Japan is a revolution yes. to do that. Yes. And we did that. Yes. And uh, we had to keep the 
older grey-haired guys because we've got wealthy people. We yes. expect to see some guy with grey hair when they yes, come in the yes, bank. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so they, they had that, still had that functionality, but right. they were not responsible for the money. Yes. Separated that out and made it much younger. We talked about the Shinsei dream, like the American dream. Mm -hmm. They could join the bank at 22 and be a branch manager by 35 mm -hmm. as opposed to 55. Mm -hmm. So that was incredible on a recruiting basis and mm -hmm. also just a, the esprit de corps inside the company. But yes. what things did you find worked well to, say, bring up a little bit more um, opportunity for people a bit younger and not have to wait 20 years to yes. be ahead of something? Yes. No, I mean, I think there was two main things. Number one, like you said, we, we, we structured the HR policy so that your role, your, your title as a length of service was different than the role. Right. Right. right, and like you, like you just mentioned, we, we separate those two out. So mm -hmm. what you would do is, if if you get be a branch manager, for instance, or stencho, um, if you if you're in that role, you got paid this type of allowance. Mm -hmm. But if you didn't succeed, you go into the regular salary structure. Mm -hmm. And so we separate the two so that we can kind of promote people. Mm -hmm. If they didn't if they didn't do well, we can kind of put them back into the mm -hmm. the, the regular you're not organization. Fired. You just you had a chance, you had a shot, you were a good fit. But you're still with us. That's right. And we've got another job for you. That's right. Mm. That's right. And then, and then the second thing was um, new grads coming out of school. Um, we put, put a program together and, and um, we try to be, make them stenchos by the sixth year. Wow. Right. They're 28 years of age. That's right. That's right. Stencho at 20. Right. I thought we were doing pretty That's good right. at Shinsei at 35. <laughs> you're killing me here. You're absolutely killing me. Right. Like, you know, and, and, seven and, years ahead of me. Wow. Yeah. Well yeah. done. Yeah. Well so, done. so uh, you know, I, I started when they first came in on April 1st. That's the that's the speech I said. Hey, I, you know, I expect you guys to, to be here, be at this level in six years. And if you were a young person joining a company, sitting in that, you know, all wearing dark suits, I'll bet, if it's back in those days, maybe different today, hearing that, you'd be thinking, wow, yeah. that's fantastic. I don't have to be 55 to get to a stencho job. I can do it at 28 or yeah. still not even 30. Yeah. Man, that must be incredibly motivating. Yeah, yeah. And, and we, we actually did that. And mm. so, so um, you know, we, of course, it wasn't one year, right? We took, we went from yeah. age thirty to twenty nine, yeah, 20, yeah, and we yeah. had to bring it down because we yeah. had all these people in the middle yeah, exactly, that we had to yeah, kind of promote exactly, as well. Yeah. So it wasn't a one shot deal, but no. but we were able to do that over three or four years. Mm. And, then, and how was the imp how was the output? How was the result? Oh, it was outstanding. You know, our, our uh, um, turnover went way down. Our I'll young bet. people, especially I'll young bet. people, turnover yeah, went yeah. way down. Yeah. We were able to build a lot of new new programs, new businesses, mm -hmm. because we had so many people that wanted to do the top job. Mm -hmm. And so that was a real success from a, um, a human resource development perspective. I mean, you know, Uniqlo is often mm -hmm. in the media. Mm -hmm. I'm not, not talking out of school here. It's in the media. Mm -hmm. I think they've changed their policy now, but they are a so-called black <laughs> company because they do the same thing. They bring in very young people, yes. turn them into managers, yes. and then flog them. Yes working ridiculous hours of massive stress and accountability, yes. burning them up, <laughs> you know? And so the same idea, promote young people quickly, mm -hmm. give them accountability, but they sort of went in a, as I said before, a sort of a harsh culture. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're Charlie Chaplin being chewed up by the wheels of the machine mm -hmm. in that. I think that changed their policy now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I read in the media. I'm not talking, you know, negative about, uh, you mm -hmm. know, uh, Uniqlo, but I'm just saying this is what we, we, we know because it's been reported and they have said they've changed. But that was the culture. So what you were doing was quite a different approach. Yes, correct. And and I think you know, one of the key key things with the Japanese media as well as that black company thing is that um, it, it prevented people that wanted to do it from, from actually working harder. And, mm -hmm. and I think that was one of the challenges that... How does that what do you mean? How does it prevent them from working hard? What do you mean well, by that? Well, for instance, if, for, for me, let's, let's, for me growing up in, in the accounting industry, I worked probably 100 hours a week in, in when I was in my 20s. I didn't do it because somebody told me to do it. I, I wanted to do it because I wanted to learn something more. Today, you're actually prevented from doing that. Right? Oh, like legal ramifications correct, of overtime correct, and correct, restrictions, correct. regulations, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. I mean, even it was my job to say, to go around and say, hey, get out of here. You know, yeah, you it's, go it's home. nine o'clock, get out. Yeah, you know? Yeah. You know? And, and it was my, I was required to do that, even though they wanted to work harder and, and mm -hmm. learn something different, it wasn't allowed. And so I think that's counterproductive to what you know, but I mean, if overall. you can't learn something in 12 hours, what, how <laughs> well, would true. another additional three hours help you? you that's know? true. Yeah, that's like, true. You that's know, true. It's Parkinson's law, right? Yeah, 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 that's true. If you have this much time for the task, the task expands to fit the time as yeah. opposed to we're trying to be more effective. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. how can we get this much done in this much time so yes. we get more production, yes, right? Yes, 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 yes. So, but I've seen plenty of that, you know, yeah. people 
Well, I remember when I first came here, I was teaching English. And I'd go into companies, you know, and I'd be leaving. I'd sort of get there. Maybe I'd start teaching from seven or something, seven to nine, you mm -hmm. know. And I'd be leaving at nine and they'd be there reading the sports right. paper. <laughs> you know, looking at the, the kacho or the bucho, hoping they're going to go home anytime soon so they can go home too. Not doing an ounce of work, but they're there, yes, you know. We're yes, there, yes, we're here, yes, we're yes, present. Yes. Present and correct, doing that's, nothing yes, important. Yes, yes, so yes. That's, of, yeah, that's useless. Sort no. of kabuki, yes. tate mai type yes. of arrangement. Yeah, that's right. That's, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. that's the other side, right? I mean, yeah, you, know, yeah. you don't want that. I mean, that's, no, that's no, no. Good, no good for anybody. Well, here in my company, mm -hmm. you, have to, you have to actually apply for mm -hmm. overtime. Uh, I see. Mm -hmm. And we're using Salesforce. Yes. We've got this customized thing in Salesforce. You go on Salesforce and you have, you have to apply. Mm -hmm. And I have to approve it. Mm -hmm. And I say, well, uh, why? Why do you have to do this? Mm -hmm. I question them, you yeah. know. Aren't you efficient enough? Yeah, Aren't yeah, you yeah. effective enough in the way you do your work? Yeah. Are your time management skills good enough? Yes. Because I would say that in a lot of cases, poor time management skills are what uh, was one of the key factors in driving mm -hmm. these ridiculously long hours. Yeah. Yeah. That's, you're absolutely right. And I try, again, as a company, I tell people when they join, we don't have any overtime here. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh. That's good. <laughs> That's good. Because, you know, I say to them, look, I'm an Aussie. Um, you know, we work hard and we go. Yeah. Well, we Australia's strong gym. at that. Sorry? Australia's very strong at that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come in Getting early, work done. hard. And, you know, yeah. I used to, 5, 5 30, I'd be in the dojo training. <laughs> Finish work at 5, go down the dojo, right. start training at 5.30 right, every day. Right. You know, right. I'll go to the gym or yeah. go to the pub or, yes. you know, spend yes. time with the family yes. or whatever you're doing, go home. Yes. To have a life. You yes, know, yes. Outside yes. of work. So, yes. I think as companies, we need to provide that for yeah. people because under the yeah. Japanese system, yeah. there's no life. You know, dad would be working, used to be six days a week, yeah. was dad was working six mm -hmm. days a week, and then Sunday you go and play golf. Yeah. Right. All these kids growing up as an orphan, right. no father, basically, you know? <laughs> single mothers raising all yeah. this population. That's well, that's why like when they retire, they got no place to go, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, I can't wait to get rid of them because they're hanging around the house. She's impinging on her lifestyle, right? That she's built up on her own right. with her girlfriends, right? Yeah. That's you know, funny. Scott, if someone rang you up and said, hey, you know, Scott, I've been given this big job in Japan. I've mm -hmm. got to go over there and run the organization, mm -hmm. but I don't know Japan. I don't speak Japanese. What yeah. do I do? How can I be effective as a leader? Mm -hmm. What would be some advice you'd give them? Mm. I, I think the number one thing is, of course, come Dale Carnegie and take some training. Oh, <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> VIP guest in the, in the, in the room here, folks. That's great. Good but, but I think, you know, the, the key thing, and I'm not, I'm not really joking about that in that, it's really important to understand the differences between your, your, your comp your, the country you're coming from and um, the Japanese style. Mm -hmm. um, I think the, the, the biggest failures are you know, they, they want to bring, for instance, the U.S. style to Japan, and, and they think they're going to push it across, and, and, and something's going to happen. Some type of... Uh, New York, Machiavellian, yes. take no prisoners, yes. elbows yes. out, uh, crawl over the bodies and grasp the brass ring type of approach yes. in Japan, yes. right? Yes, yes. I mean, that's a 100% failure, right? Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen that succeed. Never succeed. Right? Yeah. And, 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 um, and so I think, you know, people that have worked in multiple countries are more successful than um, mm. in, in Japan because they understand that, that mm. there are going to be differences. Yeah. Well, but, they've had that beaten out of them somewhere else. <laughs> Right. basically right. and then they get here and they realize well that yeah. didn't work yeah i get a second bite of the cherry now i'll do yes. it a bit differently here yeah, yes you learn. And, and the other thing that i learned when i worked from Pasona to um, tricor is that the expat community is is so separate than the japanese community mm. it's like two different worlds that mm. that run and um I, I think there's a lot more ways to more cross-pollinate in those two areas. Mm. I think the Japanese, they don't, they don't speak English. They, they'll never come to these types of uh, events. So, you know, it's, it's, it's half and half of an issue. Well, but even you go to, you know, you go to, a, you know, a Keisha Kyokai mm -hmm. event or Shoku Kaigi Show, you know, uh, event. What's happening? They have some lectures. Then you go to the party. Everyone's standing on a table talking to people they know. Mm -hmm. And yes. no one's meeting anybody unless, you yes. know, I happen to know somebody and introduce them to you. Yes, yes, yes. You know, apart from me yes. and my team, you don't see anybody walking up and saying hi, yes. you know, yes. Yes. handing out a machi and connecting with people you don't know. Exactly right. It's very insular. Yes. And the sort of when you walk up to people, maybe because I'm a foreigner, mm -hmm. but I think for my Japanese team too, they're a bit shocked, you know, that a stranger, mm -hmm. an unknown person, mm -hmm. You know, is mm. approaching me, mm. you know, in mm. close proximity, offering me their card. Who are they? You know? uh, it's not like, 
oh, great, I get to meet somebody new right. and maybe we can ex do some business together and right. maybe we can expand the possibilities. Right. Right. No one's thinking like that. Yeah. Well, I, and, and that's where my second advice is that is have a, have advisors around you. Mm. Um, they're not you don't have to spend a lot, mm. um, but have a few that can help you make those uh, connections. Mm. I, I think that that's a that's the the biggest thing for me. Um, when I when I became uh, vice president of of the of Pasona, Namba hired uh, four people as uh, vice vice chairmen for me. Oh, uh, all really? from the big shoshas. Really? Um, yeah, retired people that just retired, right. and, and they put them in as uh, as a uh, vice chairmen for 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 me to get advice and for them to really show me show me how to how Japanese business is done. Why four? Well, You're was, a capable guy. Why did he need to get four? Um, well, one would have been enough, surely. Uh, well, no, I think you need different uh, styles. I see. Okay. Right, and um, at that time it was Mitsui, Mitsubishi. Toyota okay. and one other company, yeah. and um, no, so so just different perspectives, uh, different styles, yeah. and um, that was for me that was the the biggest thing for me to really understand how to to b build these relationships with these key key people, and mm. um, and you know like you said, it's hard to go 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 meet with the president of you know, these large companies, but if you have an advisor, you can meet them relatively easily. That's right. I mean, it's amazing. Well, again, as you say. Number son probably got one of the most amazing rolodexes yeah. in yeah. creation, you know, yes. with his connections and how he, as you say, he self markets yes. and really pushes it to yes. get to meet people. You know, he makes a makes a big effort there. Yes. And what else yeah. did you? Would you other advice would you give the person who's coming? Here? Yeah, and, and I think the the the, the um, other one was things are going to take way longer than your past experiences, <laughs> but. But and I, that is because that, because um, 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 that trust piece takes longer for Japanese, I think, to, to mm. trust trust you or trust mm. you know a new person coming in. Um, and that number comes one. back to the risk aversion, doesn't it? it? You know, correct. Like, that's right. We were talking about that's the right. black mark in your that's book. Right. If you make a mistake, that's right. <laughs> so that sort of risk aversion, perfection. You got like on one hand, they want to be perfect. Right. And on the other hand, you know, they're scared of making a mistake. You put those two things together, it's a powerful cocktail. Or yes. Basically, I'm not inertia. doing anything, right? That's inertia, right. <laughs> right. Don't do anything different, right. change nothing. Yes. And so I remember a friend of mine, he was um, been working in Japan a long time, and he moved to Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, you know, well, well, I was curious, you know, what was mm -hmm. like, what's the difference in, in Hong Kong and in Japan? He said, look, in Hong Kong, if you go to any sort of business event, mm -hmm. People want to meet you because mm -hmm. they're thinking, how can we work together to make money? <laughs> right. And they're proactive. Right. So in Japan, no one wants, no one's thinking like that. Yes. They're thinking about, oh, I should stay away from you because I don't know you. Yes, you yes. might be dangerous. Yes, you know? yes, yes. And so yeah. that that fundamental difference. So yes. you're right. Having to get to people is not easy here necessarily. Yes. And they, but they know someone they trust, and you're right. in. That's right. That's right. uh, in a way, that's actually, right. at, a, at a very high level of trust too, because mm -hmm. that's very personal, isn't Correct. it? Correct. Yeah, we often right. think that Japanese are not emotional, but mm -hmm. my God, no, no, it's, they're I think very what, emotional. Yeah. Like that whole concept yes. of, I trust Scott, yes, and Scott introduced me to you know Taro over here. Yes. Well, I can trust Taro. Yes. That's not a logical idea. Right. That's a very <laughs> emotional yes. idea, isn't it? Yes, yes, and that's why that advisor is is so critical. Mm -hmm. At least critical for me. It's that's mm -hmm. the way. I was really able to understand how things how things were working, mm. but and, and the key key thing for that is that it takes a long time to build that relationship, mm. but it also takes a long time to lose that relationship. Mm. And so once you're in, your business t is develops for a long period of time, way longer than other countries. Mm. So if you look at any U.S. business that's here, that that have made it past that first investment, they're all making a lot of money. Mm. And so I think that's the key thing that that when mm. you're coming over from a different country, you have to have those pieces in place. And if you think you're going to come in for two, two, three years and build these relationships, shoot the lights and, out, yeah, and, and have a Maybe great not. business, you're not going to do it. <laughs> yeah. The other thing too is, though, you know, slow to build the relationships, keep the relationships for a long time, mm -hmm. unless you screw up. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> you know, I was doing a deal. You know, these towers, they build these steel towers for uh, phone reception. Mm -hmm. So your phone, you can pick up your phone signal anywhere. And uh, I was in Nagoya at the time, and we found uh, an Australian company who could supply those towers at basically two third discount on mm -hmm. the pricing mm -hmm. to the Japanese towers. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's an unbeatable, unbeatable financial equation, you would mm -hmm. think. Mm -hmm. But man, it was so hard to get them in. We got them in, and then some genius in Australia said, "You know what? 
if we produce these towers in Malaysia, mm -hmm. it'll be much cheaper than doing it in Australia. So right. let's do that. Right. So then they did that. And then the, these are like a Lego set or something. Or right. It was a Meccano set, you uh -huh. know, a Meccano uh -huh. set. If you had a Meccano set when you were a kid uh -huh. of putting things together and the holes have to match up and, you know, in Malaysia, they weren't doing such a great supervisory job there. Mm. And there were problems. They'd right. actually fly pieces into Japan because it wouldn't fit. Imagine how heavy these things are, right? Well, that business just yeah. evaporated. That's trust. That's right? trust. They broke, they, yes, they yes. destroyed the trust yes. and they were done. Yes, yes. They yes. could not come back. Yes. And yes. they had the market yes. at their beck and call if they wanted it. Yes. And they screwed it up, yep. you know, with some short term thinking. So, yes. yeah, if you, yes. you screw it up, that trust is out the window and yeah. it can't come back. Yeah. Now, I think that, that the trust piece is, is, is very, very important. Mm. And, and that's why that, that referral system, that, that mm. whole system works quite well. Mm. And so I think you have to have a long term perspective and from that perspective as well. What about language? Should they mm. learn Japanese? I think you have to have some, mm. um, but you're not going to be able to communicate with, for instance, keidan in, in Japanese, no matter how much. How, yeah, I can't. Today, I can speak it, but I, I don't understand. You know what, what's happening a lot it's of like times. It's like the NHK news, you know. Right. That covers the broadest range right. of themes you can right. imagine, and you have all this senmon, especially language, right. around particular themes. Mm -hmm. And you're watching the news. You got, I haven't got a damn clue what they're talking about. Right. And then the next bit will come up, and you understand everything. Right. And it's, you think, well, hang on a minute, what's going on here? Yes. I, I speak Japanese, but yes. I can understand some. I can't understand other. Yes. And yes. even yes. the way people speak too, because yes. nothing worse than yes. used to drive me crazy. I don't have a sales meeting with you know someone yes. and I'm great going really well I yes. understood what they wanted and, yes. I, and you know an hour later yeah. I'm in the next meeting with yeah. somebody else and I'm like I cannot understand what <laughs> this person is saying yes. I can't follow the drift at all yeah. just yes. lost you know yes. what happened to my Japanese in an hour I was yes. up here and now it's down here yes because the way they speak is yes. so different. yes so there's nuances there. I mean it's, yeah, it's very so far and it's not easy yes yeah. no it's it's hard it's hard yeah. and, and but but the trick is you know what this is one of the key things I learned uh, when I when I first got here as well you know you, you know what you, you understand right that's the that, that's the words that they generally you know say in a meeting and everyone goes yeah no, of course I understand, understand, understand. Okay. and you go later hey you understood that nope didn't understand <laughs> So you know, yeah, a lot of times nobody understood it, but even just understood it, you know, just for, just to save face, you know. So I exactly, think, uh, save face. Yes, exactly. yes, yeah, yes, look yes, like, yes. Don't look like you're stupid. You couldn't understand it. <laughs> right. That's quite funny. That's yeah. quite funny. So I think the, the, I think there's a lot of nuances like that where you know, tatemai um, honne, you know, type yeah. things where in Western culture you're like, what the heck are you talking about? And you you never do that here, right? right. And so, so I think those are the kind of things that well, you, know, you have to understand. We we might say something like, look, I'm sorry, I didn't, I couldn't get any of that. Right. Could you <laughs> could you tell me again, please? And, right. and not feel any shame about that. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm, not feeling mm -hmm. any like I'm a dill because yeah. I couldn't understand it. You don't you don't have that pressure. Mm -hmm. You know. Yes. And what about any yes. any particular habits? that you've built up over the years here as a leader that have served you well? Mm -hmm. um, I, I think um, uh, humbleness here works very well. Mm -hmm. um, like, like you said in the beginning, you know, being brass and, and um, you know, thinking you know everything doesn't work so well in this mm -hmm. country. Um, Let me tell you how Japan should be run. <laughs> <laughs> good luck with that. Yeah, yeah, good luck. Yes, yes, yes. Good yes. luck with that one. Yeah, I, I think that's, that's one of the things. Even, even if you, you know, know a lot, I think, you know, listening to and, and you know, the, um, listening to senior senior people or older people, even if they don't know what they're talking about, that's mm. something that's very important to the culture here. So mm. I think, you know, listening to, to to people like that and and trying to just not not take in, not take in anything because they're not they're not, they don't know what they're talking about. You know, but just looking like you're, you're interested in, in those types of conversations. I think those those types of habits well, showing have, respect. So, yeah, that's yeah. that's correct. Our, our culture is based on meritocracy, respect, that's right. you know, your that's right. ability. That's right. That's right. And that's right. Uh, how much money you have. Or exactly. Like or America, how much dough you've got. <laughs> right. you know? Australia is very much a youth culture. You know, mm. when you get older in Australia, I haven't lived there for a while, but I'm sure it's still the same. It's mm -hmm. like, well, you're old, you're mm -hmm. useless. <laughs> is that right? Yeah, yeah. You're old, you're useless. Only mm. young people have value. Mm. Yeah, seriously, you know, it's a, it's a it's a brutal it's a brutal thing down there. So there's no I respect see. for age. Like, I see, I see. Oh, you're an old old digger. You don't know anything. <laughs> you're done. I see. Get out of my way. I'm coming through. I see. That's the culture, as I see. opposed to Japan, which is I see. 
Right. Respect. You know? Right. Yes. So this yes. is a good yes. place to get old. Yeah. <laughs> in other words, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, I think don't that retire to Australia, Scott. They, are, they're, they're, <laughs> they take no prisoners down there on aged age factors. I can tell you that. Yeah. But that's what hurt, that's what's hurting the Japanese companies as well, right? I mean, yeah. this digital transformation. You know, the the top guys are seventy years old. I don't want to change from a paper driven economy to a technology driven economy. Yeah. I mean, it's they don't want to they don't want to make that change. So that's why that respect piece gets in the way of, of these changes. But yeah, I mean, it's good and bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. And what about uh, any things you found work well uh, to help you remain resilient? You know, because mm. business is up and down. Mm. You know, who can predict uh, earthquakes? Who can predict, uh, you know, a pandemic? You just, you know, I, this is my first pandemic. So I realized in reflection, I made so many mistakes as a leader mm. and I, actions I should have taken, I didn't take mm. and the presumptions I had, which proved to be incorrect. And on in hindsight, I look back and I realize well, you're a dill, mm. you know, you should have done things completely differently, but I had mm. no idea. Mm. And I, it was like peering into the unknown. Mm. And how long is this thing going to last? Mm -hmm. You know, I kept for four years. Yes. I kept on telling my team it'll be over by October. Yes, yes, you know? yes. It was like the yes. phony war in World <laughs> War One. You know? we'll, we'll all be home by Christmas. You right. know, yes, yes. nothing's really happening, and uh, not really. Yes. But you know, so, what have you found that helps you with be resilient, mm. remain resilient? Yeah, yeah. I, th I, I think a lot about that as well. Um, but you know, I, I try not to um, look back at. Like mistakes that I made in the past. I, I, what I what I tried to do is, when I realized that it was a mistake, to say I apologize to the team, say let's let's fix it, and um, I expect them to do the same, not not go back and you know, make the same mistake over and over again. And so start I start getting out the the, the, the book with <laughs> the, the black the mark, black marks against the names and start yes. firing people. Yes, yes, yes. I I think that's what's one of the key things for for me, um, especially in, in Japan. Mm. Um, and because you know that black mark system does exist, um, and people don't change, like I mean, change jobs, uh, and it, it's a lot. It's changed a lot over the last fifteen years, <laughs> but still, you know, there's not that many people changing jobs. That's still. true. And proportionately, so, it's a small number. Right, small right, number, right, right, yeah. right. So you still have to see the guy the next day, or yeah. you have to work with the person the next next week. So yeah, yeah. I think that that makes that makes you more resilient. You have to make sure that that um, you're able to keep that person or work with that person going forward. So I think that mm. that uh, maybe, it maybe goes back to that respect and, and um, mm. um, uh, you know, that that, so, that social structure that exists mm. here. Maybe go, it goes back to those things. But, but, but make sure that that's the assumption you have when you make mm. decisions is what, what I try to focus on. Mm. How about your definition of leadership? How would you define leadership? Um, you define leadership. I mean, the way <laughs> yeah, I, I saw you ask that question on every every one of your I do. one of your I do. Uh, I'm, podcasts. I'm, I'm very meticulous with my podcast. <laughs> I have my my set of questions, and people often say to yeah. me, you know, Greg, you've 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 done over 200 of these interviews. Yes. You basically ask everybody the yes. same yeah. questions. Doesn't it get repetitive? Doesn't everybody say the same thing? And mm -hmm. I say, well, no, because. Mm -hmm. Some are Japanese, some mm -hmm. are women, mm -hmm. some are foreigners, mm -hmm. some are mm -hmm. like you, you mm -hmm. know, Japanese Americans who uh -huh. come here. Some are in big companies, some are in middle companies, right. some are in startups, they're in different industries, they've right. had different life experiences. Mm -hmm. And it's quite various, you know, I mm -hmm. found actually. Mm -hmm. I mean, there might be some common things like mm -hmm. listening, you mm -hmm. know, when you come into a new role. Mm -hmm. Well, I think mm -hmm. if you don't listen in a new role, you're a bit of a dill anyway, so yeah. you're not going to last long. But yeah. I think that's a common sense thing. But yeah. I don't find, uh, we'll put it this way, I flip it that way. Mm -hmm. I always find a lot of freshness. In our conversation today, mm -hmm. you've come up with a lot of fresh insights and fresh points. It's, mm -hmm. it's very interesting. So, mm -hmm. but my question there is at mm -hmm. the end there, mm -hmm. you know, how, do you define, <laughs> how do you define leadership? So how would you define it? I mean, for, for me, you know, it's the, the for, for instance, the leader's job, and the way I look at it is, you have to pick the, you have to get the team together mm -hmm. that's going to make the, the decisions um, for for the company um, and um, your job is to make sure that it, that the direction is right it's going in the right direction and if there's a if there's something that's gone wrong mm -hmm. that's when that's your that's when you have to step in and mm -hmm. you have to make sure that you understand what the issues are with the mm -hmm. business i think that's the, the main part of leadership if you're running the day to day i think that's not being a leader you have to hire the the right people to, to be able to run the business on a daily mm. basis. And so I think that balance is, is a mm. quite important. And like you said, when there's a disaster that happens, that's when your, your job comes up and you have to make mm. sure that, that the direction of the business or the direction of the people are going in, in, in the mm. right way. Mm. And so that's, that's the way I look at it. Mm. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, Scott, thank you. This has been fabulous. Thank you very much. Now, I haven't seen you down the gym much lately, so maybe we're yeah. going at different times. Yeah. <laughs> I often enjoy running into you at the gym. Yes. We don't talk much because we're too busy. <laughs> we're very serious. You've got some people at the gym <laughs> who don't do any exercise, spend the whole time talking, right. and we are not that group. Right, right. We're not doing much talking. We're yes. doing a lot of working out, yes, so we're yes, very, yes, very yes, serious yes. about our yeah. exercise down there. And I see you laughing at me when I have the trainer. <laughs> well, I'm always telling the trainer to go harder with you. I say, you're not pushing him hard enough. Make him work harder. That's a, always encouraging that. That's the, uh, the, the sadistic element coming out there. Yeah. 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 So join us again for our next episode of Japan's top business interviews. <laughs>